Now let's head to the U.S. where we have more proof that the media's Biden protection racket is in full swing. And this time it's focused on the president's weird and wacky sayings that confound not only us, but it turns out his staff. Joining me now from New York City is filmmaker Ami Horowitz. Ami, thanks so much for uh, joining us on the program tonight. And when you think about some of the odd things Joe Biden has said over the years, it really does, well, confound you. But what about this from the weekend? I mean, this was how we spe ended a speech on gun violence. All right. God save the queen, man. I mean, what did you make of that? What do you think he made of it? Because some of his staffers, when they were asked about it, they had no idea either. Yeah, uh, okay, let me just say this, that if he was in fact quoting the Sex Pistols, then everything I say after here, I recant and I will vote for him <laughs> in 2024. Okay, just to be clear. But I doubt that he was. Uh, look, it, him saying God save the queen would have been weird if he was the prime minister of Britain because she's dead. But he's the president of the United States, so it's doubly bizarre. Also, right after that, uh, if you, didn't, you may have not noticed the tape, but he was couldn't figure out which way to get off stage, and the guy had to come up and grab his elbow and kind of lead him off stage, of course. But we, we expect this from this president who is who really is in mental decline. It's, it is very sad. I mean, let's not forget he did his best impression of the sixth sense. I see dead people when he was giving a speech and then he called out for a woman who's been dead a congresswoman who's been dead for 30 days jackie jackie you there jackie where are you guys i mean this is getting sad and yes well, the, the, well, the 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 yeah Oh, and I was going to say, but you know, the, the thing, Ami, that's really alarming to me, though, is that the press, which, uh, you know, in the past has always picked up on presidents, especially Republican presidents' uh, foibles, well, they're in full protection mode. I'm going to read you this little bit from Axios.com. They said Biden's quirky aphorisms are sometimes weaponized by Republicans, ooh, to insinuate the 80-year-old president is in mental decline. But Biden has been using unique phrases for years, though even some of his aides aren't exactly sure what he means by them. I mean, where is the first estate or the fifth estate in all of this, the press, to come out and say, hey, we got a problem here? No, they're, they are in full-fledged protection mode. They're an extension of the Biden government. I mean, let's not—just just looking at how they reacted when the president uh, tripped over, um, you know, tripped on himself over a sandbag uh, when he was giving a speech to the, to the, uh, to the Naval College. And um, every, the entire press went crazy. You could not attack him or make fun of him for falling down. Yet, when, when Trump was walking gingerly down a ramp, they spent days making fun of him over and over again. And what that really speaks to is they understand that Trump is a, is a vi say what you will, will about Trump, he is a vigorous individual for his age, and therefore you don't have to protect him. As with Biden, though, they understand that the man is on his last legs and they have to protect him at all costs. Well, indeed. But now I want to shift over to New York City, where you are, where I'm from, as a lot of viewers know. And tell me now what the situation with the Democrats is running New York City, because I'll tell you what, from here, every day I open the NewYorkPost.com and I see more slashings, more stabbings, more shootings, more train shovings, more mayhem. But this is also happening around the country. San Francisco, we're seeing the death of the downtown there. Are we seeing, Ami, the death of the great American city under progressive rule or misrule? Oh, we, we, we sure are. And, and by the way, we, we have a, a playbook for this in the 70s and 80s. We, we're repeating what we had lived through in those 20 years. We're seeing now in slow motion the exact same policies being implemented with the exact same results, yet we are still on this freight train to urban oblivion. Yes, San Francisco, which was one of the great American cities. No, one of the great world cities, a, a, a phenomenal, killer 
culinary scene, uh, mm. uh, great bar scene, unbelievable arts and entertainment, and, and it's now become a steaming pile of human excrement, which, by the way, you can see on pretty much any San Francisco street corner right now. And, but, you know, it's so, you know, talking about the press and the irony of the press, you know, CNN recently went down to report on crime, and the reporter's car was broken into while they were doing the scene. And it's having major economic consequences to the city. You are seeing major retailers leave. Now you're seeing entire Westfield, which is actually an Australian company, Westfield has now, they just handed the keys over to their lender. They are walking away from, from, from their shopping mall because they can't do any business. This is really a sad scene to watch, James.